My name is Tommy Cooksey. I'm a PeopleSoft Certified Developer, Administrator, and Trainer. If you would like any training and or any assistance on your PeopleSoft implementations or existing implementations, I would love to help you. Uh, here's my name and email address to reach me. So let's talk about PeopleSoft databases. So when you have a PeopleSoft database, let's assume that this is our database. In any PeopleSoft environment, you know, you always have a relational database management system. And that database can be on Oracle or it's DB2 or, or SQL Server. Um, but basically the concept is, is that the database is going to store uh, all of your transactional data. So that data uh, that is stored in the database is going to be stored in what we call data tables. And so the data tables that are in a PeopleSoft database are going to be one of three types of data tables. There are what's called the system tables. There is what's called the tools tables. And then there's also what's called the apps tables. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, what each of these are and what they represent. So the system tables. What exactly is a system table? Well, when you install the database, you get a set of data tables that come with the database. So imagine, if you will, the system tables are the metadata and if you don't know what metadata means, metadata is a very simple, uh, very simple definition, data about data. So metadata, system tables are the metadata for the RDBMS. So it's the data that's telling the database about what it's holding. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say, for instance, if you have a, um, a set of users, those users would be stored in the database in a table for the users, like, for instance, DBA users. So um, a good example of that, you know, like for instance, if you see DBA users, or if you see like DBA index, um, and this would be on an Oracle uh, um, server, then those would be considered um, uh, the DBA, I should say, DBA kind of gives you a hint that that's going to be a system table. Uh, if you have a table that has sys, like sysindex or sysusers, um, then that's also a good hint, but this would be more in uh, SQL Server. So again, the system tables are the metadata or the data about data that's used by the database or the relational database management system in order to define the information that's being stored on that database. Simply, that's it. It's just so the database basically has an index of what the database is doing, telling the database what the structure is of the database. So then we have our tools tables. And the tools tables are kind of like the underlying structure of PeopleSoft. So think of the tools tables are the metadata or data about data for all PeopleSoft applications. Let me give you an example. If you are in PeopleSoft, you're always going to have users. And you, those are all stored in a table, data table called PS Operative. No matter if you're using CRM or HCM or uh, financials or, or Campus Solutions or any of the products by PeopleSoft, you always have tools. And so tools, again, is the underlying architecture that's required in order to give you the environment that's needed in order to run a PeopleSoft implementation. So for instance, PeopleSoft OperDefin uh, uh, or, or PS OperDefin uh, is, is the place that stores your users. Uh, PS uh, DB Field, for instance, is where you store your fields that you have on your pages. Uh, let's say, for instance, the... Um, um, the uh, personal data, uh, or actually, no, that would be an application table. Uh, but for instance, the um, the pages that you uh, navigate to are called P is in PS Panel Defin. Uh, the um, components that you uh, navigate to are in PS Panel Group. Um, and so, in essence, what I'm trying to get at is usually if you see PS and then, for instance, the table name, uh, then chances are you are dealing with a tools table. 
Okay, so again, tools tables are just the metadata for all PeopleSoft applications. It's what you need in order to be able to run PeopleSoft. So if you don't have tools installed, you can't run CRM. If you don't have tools installed, you can't run finance or HR or any of the products that are coming from PeopleSoft. So with that being said, now that we have the underlying architecture of tools, um, now we're ready to install the application. So I like to think of, again, like I was saying earlier, I like to think of uh, this in an analogy. And so the analogy that I like to say is, you know, for instance, if we're installing a computer, uh, the computer has to have an operating system, and then that operating system then provides you the ability to run applications on it. So you can kind of think of tools as kind of like the operating system for PeopleSoft. So it, it's required in order to run PeopleSoft, and then you're also required to have a database uh, in order to host that uh, that that tools uh, operating system in, in essence. And so again, this is a more of a cloud-based type uh, an environment, so um, or an ERP type type based environment, meaning that it's going to be spread spread out across multiple systems. So not necessarily cloud-based, but more of an ERP type, type application. Um, and so then the final um, the final table type that you have is what's called application tables. And so this is the row level data that makes your PeopleSoft unique. So, um, this is where you're gonna have your transactional data for your ERP systems, regardless of whatever system you're using. So, again, this is where you're gonna have PS, like for instance, your job codes, or like your personal data for your users. Um, um, I think it's personal data. Yeah, that's another score. But anyway, you guys get the idea. So the concept here is is that the application tables, uh, the tools tables, and the system tables are all uniquely identified in the system based on the type of table that they are, and they have unique functionality. So um, when you start to think about this, you know, from a um, from a um, an administrative perspective, okay. So let's start to think about this from from an admin perspective. And if I have to apply a patch or an update or upgrade or something like that to the system, um, you know, if I have a tools patch, then what am I going to be hitting? Well, if I have a tools patch, I'm going to be hitting here, right? So the tools patches hit, you know, tools upgrade. So if you're going to be doing a tools upgrade, then you're going to be hitting your tools tables, right? If you're going to be doing an application upgrade, then obviously an application upgrade is going to be a little different. And then so the apps upgrade are going to be hitting the tables down here. So um, when you do an apps upgrade, you know, so for instance, if I do an application upgrade, uh, then I'm going from, you know, for instance, from 9. Point, let's say I'm going from 9.0 uh, to over to um, 9.2. And then... 9.2. Okay, so that would be an example. Oops, let's see. There we go. 9.2. There we go. All right, so that would be an example of an apps upgrade. And then a tools upgrade would be like, for instance, if you're going from uh, tools version 854 uh, to 856 or something like that. So 8.54. Uh, maybe to uh, like I said 8.56 so 8.56 which is the current tool version so that would be an example of like a tools upgrade so uh, again tools upgrades um, are a little different than a uh, move this down a little bit so it'll fit a tools upgrade is a little different than a uh, uh, people tools apps upgrade um, in essence uh, being that usually when we do a tools upgrade we're providing additional functionality to the system like for instance maybe some new reporting maybe a new fluid user interface uh, maybe some new dashboards maybe some new pump functionality um, but it's usually functionality to the under underlying operating system and then when you do an apps upgrade usually it's something uh, to the actual ERP application right so you're, uh, you're upgrading some additional functionality to maybe the ability to manage users or the ability to manage GL entries or whatever the case may be so hopefully this was informative and helpful for you. I will be doing more of these on the additional architecture of the app server and the web server, and those will be coming shortly. Thanks again, and I appreciate you watching my video, and hopefully this taught you a little bit about uh, PeopleSoft databases. And so if you need any other assistance or if you need any help, please feel free to reach out to me, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.